Hello and welcome to a new very interesting video. This video is about this tape recorder here. It's the Telefunken Magnetophone 301. And at the moment I'm repairing or restoring this tape recorder. And I thought it might be a good idea to tell you a little bit about the inner workings of such a tape recorder. And I think this is a good example because it's a pretty simple tape recorder. It has only two heads, so it's it's uh, not a three head machine, it's a two head machine, one erase head and one record and playback head. And uh, the, the basic functionality of a tape recorder is in here. So I think it's a good example for that. Yeah, and so we will do a little uh, circuit analysis here to, to study how this thing works and how the circuits in here operate. So this is, will be pretty exciting. So first of all, let me open it up. Oh, basically, I already it's it's already opened because I've already removed the screws. So I have to only remove this cover here. Okay, and I have to remove this cover here. So there were two screws up here, and I already undid them. So there we go. Okay, all right, so let's look at the mechanics of this thing. Um, here we have the supply wheel, here we have the take up wheel, and under here we have a big flywheel which is connected to the capstern, and here we have another flywheel, and here we have the motor, and there is a belt which goes around this flywheel and also touches this flywheel, and then it goes back to the motor, and as you can see, the motor therefore uh, can turn both flywheels. Um, and uh, what else have we got? We have uh, a belt here and we have this wheel and this wheel is for fast forward I will show you later what it does and uh, this one here is for fast rewind Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, let's look at the play functionality So if I put this thing into play mode like this uh, now you can see uh, the uh, Pinch roller is, is engaged to the capstan. So now the pinch roller touches the capstan and the take up wheel is now moving and uh, now let me stop it again yeah and now let's see how this play actually works um, so we have this uh, rubber belt here and uh, this rubber belt will be engaged with this lever here if the recorder is in play mode and this actually forms a clutch mechanism so if I put it into play like this now you can see uh, the lever is engaged and now if I try to hold the wheel like this you can see it actually stops because this is only a rubber belt here and therefore we have a clutch going on which is exactly what we need for a tape recorder because the thing which dictates the speed is the capstan and the pinch roller so these two uh, things here and uh, not this wheel so this wheel actually has this has this clutch mechanism and the speed is controlled right into here okay um, and what else? So let's see how fast forward works. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have this wheel here and if I put it into fast forward mode, then uh, two things happen. First of all, this wheel will be engaged to this one and also up here we have a tiny switch and this switch will put the motor in fast forward mode because in play it's in a regulated mode. I will tell you a little bit more about that if we look uh, at the schematic later on. Um, but uh, in, uh, in fast forward this regulated mode will be interrupted by the switch and, and now if I put it into fast forward now let's uh, let's look at this belt and at this um, this wheel right here and as you can see now the belt, belt touches the take up spool and uh, the motor runs at full speed and now this fast forward action is actually working so let me stop that again and now one thing is left, this is the fast rewind and for fast rewind we have this wheel here and this wheel then will connect the flywheel with the take up spool so if I put it into fast rewind now you can see the wheel is engaged and the fast rewind is working okay alright so this was the basic information about the mechanics of this thing and now let's jump right into the circuit. So here I have the circuit a diagram uh, right from the service manual. And um, as I said before, it's a pretty basic circuit. Um, so let's get right into it. So we have um, two 
printed circuit boards in here. One is this big board which contains everything uh, of the record electronics and amplifier and power amplifier. And uh, this small circuit board here uh, will contain the control for the motor because there is a speed control circuit in here which controls the speed of the motor and I will explain you later how this works. Uh, but first of all let's look at the recorder itself where these boards are located. Uh, so to show you that I have to turn it around. Just like this. Okay, all right, so here we have the two boards. Um, here we have the motor control board and here we have the board which contains the rest of the stuff. So first of all, let's look um, at the big board. Um, and again, here we have it. And let's, let's see how this actually works. Okay, um, so uh, this amplifier, the whole amplifier has two purposes. Um, it is a record and playback amplifier at the same time and also power amplifier at the same time. So to reduce the amount of transistors, um, they actually build a two purpose thing. Um, and the disadvantage of this is that this can only be used in a two head machine which means um, that there is no monitoring of your recording while you're recording it. Because if you have a three head machine then you can record with the record head and listen to it while you are recording with your reproduce head. But for that you need a separate record and playback amplifier. But this does not have a separate record and playback amplifier that only has uh, two heads. So this is a cheaper solution I would say. But it's a pretty smart solution because uh, they actually managed to use the amplifier for two purposes. Okay, so let's start. Here this is the start of the amplifier or the input of the amplifier and um, this amplifier has two possible inputs. One would be the reproduce and record head which is this head. So this is the audio head which uh, records and reproduces. This is by the way the erase head but this is record and reproduce uh, or playback uh, uh, however you want to call it. And um, this switch here switches uh, between either the external inputs, so here you can connect the microphone or line signal, or the head. So it depends in which mode it is. So currently uh, in this switch position here, now it's in playback mode because the head is now connected with the amplifier. And if you switch it into record mode, then the external inputs are connected with the amplifier. Okay, all right, and uh, this here is the first stage. And uh, this stage is actually a common emitter amplifier, uh, which is degenerated because if you carefully look at it, we have this capacitor across this uh, resistor here. So this resistor is AC ground, but we have another resistor up here. And uh, this resistor actually acts as a feedback resistor. So we have a feedback going on here, so degenerated feedback. And uh, so we can set the gain of this thing by uh, this resistor divided by this resistor plus 1 over GM. GM is the transconductance of the transistor. And uh, this is the collector current divided by the temperature voltage, which is 27 millivolts at room temperature. So the temperature voltage is 27 millivolts at room temperature. And you get, can get GM by uh, collector current divided by uh, this uh, uh, temperature voltage. Okay, so this is the first stage and then the second stage is very interesting because we have here an amplifier made of four, uh, sorry, of three transistors. This has a special purpose, but these are the actual uh, amplifier transistors. And uh, how does this work? Uh, this is actually a feedback amplifier. So first of all, if we ignore this up here and if we just look at the amplifier without feedback, um, then we can find the following interesting thing that at the emitter of the last transistor we have this feedback going on here. We have feedback going on here and we have this feedback. But this feedback here is clearly only DC feedback for setting the operating point. Because here we have a big capacitor so this puts uh, this emitter at AC ground and therefore this point is AC ground so we have no feedback going on, no AC feedback going on. We have only DC feedback going on here because this is AC ground, okay. Um, and uh, 
So this is for setting the operating point to get a stable operating point. But what is the other feedback here doing? This is the equalization actually because we have a filter network here with capacitors and resistors and here we have also this switch. So currently it's in play mode so these upper equalization capacitors and resistors are in the circuit and uh, these are uh, for equalizing uh, the, the tape actually because the tape recorder uh, to get the linear response from the output we have to compensate uh, the tape basically and uh, to do that we use uh, se several components, several filters uh, to compensate uh, the frequency response of the tape uh, and to get a linear overall frequency response. For this we have to use a certain filtering at record and we have to use a certain filtering at playback and this is the playback filtering and this is the record filtering and this filtering is done via this feedback loop. So this switch switches also between uh, play and record and now again it's in play mode and if you switch it to record mode then we have this lower thing here going on and then we have a, a different equalizations. This is basically uh, the record equalization and playback equalization and this is the amplifier uh, which uh, uses this equalization. And then up here we have another transistor um, this is the plus supply and if you look carefully then you can see that all the emitters are pointing inwards and here we have ground because I haven't mentioned this before. So these are all PMP transistors and um, the interesting thing here is that our plus supply, this is the plus supply line, is actually not a plus supply, it's a minus supply. So this thing is, is uh, we have a negative supply voltage and ground therefore would be more positive than the signal. So actually this is plus uh, whatever voltage and this is basically what, what uh, you, you used to think of ground but this thing is inversed so uh, ground if this is the zero potential then we have negative voltage here and I think it's written on here it's negative 6 volt what you should expect on this point okay. Um, so keep that in mind many devices like this have this a negative ground going on so it's a bit weird if you look at it at first but it has negative ground and what do we have here this emitter follower supplies the stages which have um, actually lower signal level and this is for two purposes first of all it uh, removes any noise which come in from here because of this emitter follower characteristic because here at the, at the base we have a capacitors to filter everything and then this filtered uh, voltage here will be copied down to here because it's an emitter forward so this is the first thing and also this capacitor and resistor are forming a time constant so at the first one or two seconds while the tape is starting up uh, this transistor won't conduct and uh, therefore the output will be quiet so this should prevent um, any uh, unwanted noise or sound at the, at the startup okay um, so but let's continue um, now we have this here and uh, this looks a bit complicated but it actually isn't uh, this is looks only complicated because the thing has two modes and first of all in play mode this is very simple in play mode this is the output amplifier because here we have our loudspeaker so this is our power amplifier um, so how is this working uh, actually in play mode uh, or yeah in play mode we use this transformer because transformers are pretty often used so they, they, they are used in the in the 70s and 60s they are very often used for amplifiers and this uh, transformer is actually the drive the output transistors which are these two transistors both of them are PNP and this forms a push-pull stage because here we have a center tap transformer and one side of the transformer goes to one of the transistors and the other side goes to the other so we need to create something that uh, does push-pull so actually if this transistor here this transistor pulls uh, then this shouldn't and if this transistor pulls then this sh shouldn't okay so it's always alternating between these two and to get that we use the transformer because here we have the input for the transformer with this uh, uh, winding here and then on the secondary it's also center tapped and to set the operating point we use this diode plus a couple of resistors and also this temperature dependent resistor 
uh, to stabilize temperature drift. So we have a, a, a a fixed DC voltage here and the DC voltage since the transformer conducts DC gets to the basis of the transistors and therefore we set the quiescent current and uh, if we have a signal here since it is set center tapped then if the, uh, the signal is going up on this side then it will go down on the other side and vice versa and therefore we get this inver inversion going on and uh, therefore we can get we can drive our push-pull transistors with this so actually it's a very simple output stage and uh, since this has multiple modes in record mode, this is doing something else. And uh, this is very interesting because in record mode, the upper transistor acts as an oscillator, right? It's an oscillator and the lower transistor drives uh, the meter, which uh, shows you uh, the record level. Okay, so first of all, let, let's look again at the complete thing. So if we are in record mode, then this switch goes up and the input jack is connected to this transistor here and we can set the volume with this or the record level with this in playback this is the volume and it goes uh, right to here and then at this point if this is in record mode then this transistor acts as an emitter follower because we get the signal here in record mode uh, the, the collector of this is on the negative supply uh, because this goes up and then we have our negative supply voltage okay um, and then at the emitter if you look carefully we have the meter right here and we have a adjustable resistor in series to set the record level to set the record level which the meter displays and uh, this is only an emitter follower for the for the meter as simple as that and up here we have an oscillator so for what do we need an oscillator the oscillator is there to bias the tape uh, because the tape needs some sort of pre-magnetization to get low harmonic distortion and uh, so that actually the signal can be recorded better. There's, uh, this is, uh, there's a lot of information about this and this would be a video on its own and maybe I will do one. But uh, to get higher quality recording we need some sort of bias oscillator which this thing has. And there is no good tape recorder without an oscillator. All tape recorders have a bias oscillator. It's very important. And how does this work? If we're in record mode, so if this switch is down here, then the base is connected to plus, or sorry, to the negative supply with this resistor here. And uh, the other side of the base goes to ground via, uh, if we look at this here, via this inductor here. So this sets the operating point for the transistor. So now we are in a uh, common emitter mode because the emitter is on ground. And what happens here? At the collector we have a, a transformer going from plus to the collector. And then at the base uh, or the, the secondary of this transformer is connected to the base. So we have feedback going on here. And uh, this means that we have um, regenerative feedback going on here. So this is an oscillator. Regenerative feedback means that we have feedback that actually adds to itself so that it regenerates itself. It gets bigger and bigger and therefore we have oscillation going on. And uh, this is our BS oscillator. I think it has 63 uh, kilohertz or something. And um, by the way, uh, this here is called degenerative feedback because it degenerates the signal. It reduces something, gets subtracted, but this regenerates itself, it adds to itself. So we have regenerative feedback going on here. Okay, um, so how is this coupled to the head? So here we have our erase head. So our erase head is connected with the secondary as you can see. So this gets our AC signal and also with this node here, as you can see, it goes down here. And here we have the record head and it is coupled into here at this point. So this is where the record head gets its AC bias. And we have also something uh, interesting here, which is called a bias tra trap because um, this should prevent the higher frequency signal from getting back into the amplifier, okay? So here we have a bias trap and this also can be adjusted so you can measure the signal here and adjust this inductor until uh, you get uh, no uh, feedback of the bias or until it, it blocks uh, uh, as much uh, of your bias signal as it can. Okay, so now let's jump right into the last part and uh, this is uh, the motor a control circuit and this is very interesting actually.
Okay, all right, so let's look at this circuit here. Let's look at the motor control circuit. So this is the motor itself and it contains the motor, of course, and it also contains a transformer and a switch. Very interesting. So what is this doing? So we have this switch in here and this switch opens after a certain speed is reached. So after a certain speed, this switch opens, okay? And this transformer with this, uh, this uh, transistor here uh, is forming another oscillator, okay? So we have another oscillator going on. Uh, because at the collector we have the primary of one winding of the transformer and in parallel to this we have a capacitor So we have an LC circuit here and then down here We have the feedback a winding which goes then back to the base So we have another feedback oscillator and by the way the oscillator up here has is also an LC oscillator because we have the C is here This is the L. I haven't mentioned this before, but here we have our C in here and this is the same as this here. All right. Um, yeah, so how is this now working? Um, if this switch, by the way, if this switch is closed, then the oscillator won't oscillate because this dampens the oscillator. This loads or dampens the oscillator and therefore no oscillation will occur. But if this switch opens, then the oscillator will start up. So this means that at the beginning, this switch is closed. So what does this mean? So if there's no oscillation going on, then this transistor will be open because we have no voltage here which drives the transistor. And therefore this transistor will be closed because it's pulled to negative with this resistor and therefore it will be closed. And if this transistor is closed, then the motor will be connected from plus via this transistor to ground, uh, sorry, from, from negative via this transistor to ground. And therefore the motor will run at maximum speed. Okay. Um, but now if the motor reaches a certain speed this switch opens and if this switch opens and the oscillator starts to oscillate and therefore we will have a voltage at the base here and then this transistor will close but then this transistor will have to open because if this closes then the voltage here gets rubbed by this transistor and therefore this one has to open and therefore the motor again decreases in speed. So this thing is actually a speed regulation, which is pretty uh, pretty smart because this makes it independent from the voltage. And this is important because the voltage, uh, it, it can be battery powered and therefore we have to make sure that if the battery voltage varies that the speed does not vary. And this is done with this smart little oscillator uh, trick and I really like it. So this is uh, something very interesting. Um, yeah. So uh, I think we will measure a little bit on this circuit so that we can explore it a bit more. Okay, uh, so here we have the motor control board and um, I want to connect uh, my oscilloscope to this point here. So this to this feedback winding of the transformer. So I will use this resistor here, which is R7. So I connect it to this side of R7. And if we look at the layout, this, this is the layout. Then we can find R7 is right here and I will connect it to this point right here. And so I have to turn this around to match it because this is the layout, this is what it actually is. And here we have R7. So this here must, oh sorry, this here must be R7. It is hidden behind a transistor. So here this must be R7. So this is where I will connect it. Uh, by the way, the schematic which I showed you before um, is not from the magnetophone 301, it's from the magnetophone 300, but uh, there are no differences in this circuit, so the differences are not very big, they are minute and therefore um, uh, it's, it is a pretty good um, circuit diagram, it's good enough for the explanation. And uh, now let me connect it to this resistor here to ground. So our oscilloscope is now uh, connected right here. And uh, let's look at the oscilloscope and let's see what it does. Okay, all right. So here we're looking at the oscilloscope because as always, no scope, no fun. I've connected the oscilloscope to the feedback winding of the transformer. And uh, now let's uh, turn on the device. And there we go. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, here, as you can see, these uh, green blobs are the oscillations. So this is when the oscillator is oscillating. And then we have, of course, the line when there is no oscillation going on. So what does that mean? So if the motor 
is uh, slow then we have this line here and then it ramps up to a certain speed and uh, if this speed is reached then the oscillation kicks in and uh, therefore uh, the motor speed then will be decreased again and this goes uh, up and down and up and down and exactly that way so you can see here that the regulation is actually working as it should um, if I now load the thing a bit uh, let let me do that I just I just touch uh, the uh, the flywheel and as you can see the period of the oscillation gets it, it oscillates for a shorter time so as you can see now it oscillates for a shorter time and this is because the motor actually needs more uh, power uh, to to, uh, to to still get the right speed so now at this at the moment now I'm still having the right speed and if I load it even more then you can see it's, it's flatlining because now the regulation isn't un, is unable to to get the right speed and now it's um, at the right speed again so now let's let's take a closer look uh, let's have a closer look at the oscillation so for this I will zoom in like this and, and now you can see the signal of the oscillator and as you can see we have about uh, 10 microseconds period here so this means that the oscillator is a 100 kilohertz oscillator okay so let's zoom out again and look at this uh, beautiful oscillation okay all right so this concludes this analysis of this beautiful oscilloscope picture okay all right so this concludes the circuit analysis of this beautiful machine here and uh, by the way the circuit i showed you is from the magnetophone 300 and not from the 301 so this one is the 301 but the circuit is from the 300 um, but there are no big differences actually the difference is that the 300 has uh, only a one track head and uh, the 301 has two tracks and you can switch between the two tracks uh, with this uh, buttons right here but this is not stereo or something it's still mono you can just switch between the two mono tracks you can record uh, either the first or the second track and uh, but not both at the same time and this uh, only has one track uh, so you can um, also record two sides of the tape by just flipping the tape around um, yeah but this is uh, the only big difference but the rest of the circuit should be almost the same so everything of this explanation is valid for the 300 and 301 model so just uh, just to mention that okay yeah but again this concludes this uh, analysis video of this very beautiful recorder I hope you have enjoyed watching it and maybe learn a thing or two and yeah I can say Thanks for watching and bye!